Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today is grade six, practice problems review. Unit four, lesson eight, is part one of how much in each group. Our first problem, for each scenario, use the given tape diagram to help you answer the question. Mark up and label the diagram, diagrams excuse me, as needed. In question one, let's zoom in on that one here. May has picked one cup of strawberries for a cake, which is enough for three-fourths of the cake. How many cups does she need for the whole cake? Well, what do we know? We know she's picked one cup of strawberries for the cake, which is three-fourths of the cake. And so we're going to put our one cup here. Now we know just this portion here. is three-fourths of the cake, which would make all of it here the entire cake. So one cup is three-fourths of the cake. Now, what is this cup broken into? Thirds. And so we can say, well, one third cup here, one third cup here, one third cup here, leaves us with another third cup here. So what do I have? I have the one cup and the extra third. So one and one third cup is my solution. If we look at question two, Priya, oh, at least part two, Priya has picked one and a half cups of raspberries, which is enough, again, for three-fourths of the cake. How many cups does she need for the entire cake? Well, once again now, instead of one cup, this is going to be one and a half cups. And it's three-fourths of the cake. So this portion is three-fourths of the cake which means our entire bar is one cake. Our one and a half cup is split three ways here. Well, if we look at one and a half as the same thing as three halves, well, three halves split three ways is half a cup each, which then we can finish with another half. And so how many cups of raspberry do I have? Two cups. As one half plus one half plus one half plus one half is four halves, which is the same thing as two. As we continue on to the next question, Tyler painted nine half square yards of wall area with three gallons of paint. How many gallons of paint does it take to paint each square yard of wall? Then, one, write a multiplication and division equations to represent the situation, and two, draw a diagram to represent the situation and answer the question. Well, I like to work with the diagrams first. And so let's draw ourselves our own bar diagram. Now, the entire thing is three gallons. And I painted nine half square yards wall area with that. So if I just kind of break this into nine, each of these here, one half, one half, one half, one half, adds up to the nine halves. Well, if each of these is half of a yard, that would mean then that this portion of it is one square yard. Because again, the entire thing was nine halves square yards. So where are we going with this? Well, the three gallons is also split through this. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine parts of that because of those nine halves. And so three gallons split into these ninths, well, here's a gallon, here's a gallon, and Here's a gallon. Each of those is split into the three here, so each of these is 
one third of a gallon. And so finally, after breaking this all apart, what does it take to do this one square yard here? Well, one third plus one third is two thirds of a gallon. Now, the multiplication and division question part of this, we can say, well, I took three and I divided it into nine halves. And what does that equal? Or we can take our nine halves and multiply by the what, and that was equal to three. And of course, that what we found out was two thirds. In our third question, after walking one fourth mile from home, Han is one third of his way to school. What is the distance between his home and school? One, write multiplication and division equations, and two, Use the given diagram to help you answer the question, mark up, and label as needed. Well, I'm actually going to redraw it out here again because I need a little bit more space than what I gave myself. So this is what we were given. Basically, he's gone one-fourth of a mile. And what that's going to represent is one-third the distance to school. Now conveniently enough, this bar diagram is already broken into thirds. And so we can look at this and go, well, that's one-fourth of a mile. That's one-fourth of a mile. That'll get us two-thirds of the way to school. And then three-thirds of the way to school will get us another one-fourth, which takes us to three-fourths. Because this entire bar represents the distance to school. And what was that distance? Well, one-fourth and one-fourth and one-fourth is three-fourths miles. For our equations that we need, our division equation, we took our one-fourth of a mile and we divided it into one-third sections. Or we could look at one-third sections, one-third of the way to school, and multiply it by how far was each section, or I'm sorry, the total, <laughs> excuse me, to get to one-fourth. Question four here is a division equation. This is review from lesson seven. Four-fifths divided by two-thirds. Write a multiplication equation that corresponds to the division equation and draw a diagram that helps you represent. We'll just jump right here to the answer for the multiplication equation. Two-thirds times what is equal to four-fifths? So two-thirds times what is equal to four-fifths or something like that. As for our bar diagram, now let's draw something out ourselves. Let's first break our diagram here into thirds because this is going to be two-thirds of our group, where the entire thing is one group. And so we'll be looking here for this two-thirds of a group section. Now, four-fifths represents this, so I need to get four, the number four in here. And so if I break each of these sections, I now have a one-fifth here and a one-fifth there. Here are one-fifth, there are one-fifth, there's four-fifths. Four-fifths into that two-thirds. Now, one-third is here with two of the fifths. Another third is here with two of the fifths. So I actually need to do another two of these here for the entire group. And so what this is telling me now is that my four-fifths divided into the two-thirds is actually going to be 
One, two, three, four, five, six fifths. Problem five. A set of books that are each one and a half inches wide are being organized on a bookshelf that is 36 inches wide. How many books can fit on the shelf? Multiplication, division equation, and find the answer and draw a diagram and use the multiplication equation to check your answer. Okay, all that good stuff. So, basically, how many books times the one and a half inches is going to be 36 inches, or in other words, 36 divided by one and a half equals what? Well, that what is going to equal 24. If we looked at a diagram here, where the entire thing was 36, we're taking 36 and dividing into one and a half. And so we can say, well, there's one and a half. Well, let's split the original one into halves as well. How does that fit in? Well, 12 in each. Then, just looking for this part of it. And so 36 divided into one and a half is actually going to equal 24. Last step, check using the multiplication. So what times one and a half was equal to 36 was the idea. If I put in 24 times one and a half, does that equal 36? Sure enough, it does. 36 equals 36. We're good to go. And our last question on this review, without calculating, order the expressions based on their values from smallest to largest. Well, 56 divided by 8 um, is going to be... Um, well, you know, I can't calculate it, so we're not going to uh, say the answer, <coughs> 7. But 56 divided by a really big number is going to be a really small number. And 56 divided by a really small number is going to be a really big number. And so I guess this one's just going to kind of be in between. And so from smallest to largest, it's going to be the 56 divided by 8 million followed by that one in the middle, 56 divided by 8, followed by the really big number, where you take 56 and divide by the really small number. And I think I got all the zeros there. Explain how you found the answer. Well, I hope I did for you, but our answer here, since the dividend is the same for all three response or expressions, that would be the 56 part. The larger the divisor, the smaller the quotient. So the larger the divisor, the smaller the quotient. So this is the largest, so it's going to have the smallest quotient. This is in the one in the middle, so it's the one in the middle. This is the mm. uh, smallest divisor, so it's going to be the biggest quotient. Find a number so that n is for n, so that 56 divided by 10, n is greater than 1 but less than 7. Well, they picked 10, and they showed you that you know, 56 divided by 8 is 7. 56 divided by 56 is 1. So if you're looking for greater than 1 or less than 7, really you're looking for any number between 8 and 56 will work for n. That's it. For this grade six practice problems review on unit four, lesson eight, how much in each group, part one. Good luck.